All right, welcome everybody to another uh, live sound webinar here uh, focused on S6L. Uh, today, we are going to talk about groups and all the grouping functions that are available to S6L. Uh, and we're going to talk about how to do assignments, uh, some operational concepts, all kinds of good stuff here today uh, with regard to S6L. All right, so let's just jump right to it. Let's get it going here. So as, uh, you know, as a central theme to everything that we've been talking about uh, with S6L here going forward, uh, you know, always, we're always going to come at it from the angle of unified platform here. Obviously, all the things I'm going to show you today apply to all of the products in the unified platform. You can use this, uh, these concepts everywhere. But as uh, to be expected when we're talking about groups and outputs and things like that, the number that you have available to you might change over time, so or, or depending on, uh, not over time, depending on which uh, engine you choose. So this is kind of how it shakes out with our engine choices currently. Uh, we have E6L192, E6L144, and E6L112. Um, and these are the buses that are available to you. So you can see as you go from the, the top of the line engine, you have 96 uh, mixed buses available to you uh, on down to 48 in the E6L112. Uh, uh, the amount of subgroups that you use is dependent upon how you ratio those things out, but you have a maximum of 32 mono or 16 stereo uh, available to you there. I believe that's right. I'm pretty sure I put that in there, right? Might have to check myself here as we get going. Uh, the matrix counts, as you can see there, uh, kind of go up and down depending on what engine you choose. Uh, but there's a common amount of mute groups, and recently we added a common amount of VCAs available to all of those systems. Uh, just to make going back and forth between your show files a little bit easier for you. All right, so that's how it shakes out numbers-wise. Uh, <clears throat> so here's our agenda today. Here's what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about how to create a group architecture, uh, how to designate the number of groups that you want to use versus auxes, et cetera. Uh, we're going to talk about the multi-assign versus the multi-select workflow to do assignments. And then, of course, we're going to talk about how to rearrange those groups. One of the cool things on S6L is that when you're making stereo and uh, things like that, you can really drag and drop these into any order that you want on the console. Very powerful workflow there for S6L. And then, of course, we're going to talk about how to move mixes between groups. Maybe you want to duplicate mixes. Maybe you kind of want to create mix minuses, things like that. Yeah, we can sh I can show you some easy ways to manage that on the groups. And then, of course, we will talk about the, uh, just we're going to talk really briefly about delay compensation. I want to show you this uh, in our matrices because we have the ability to add inputs and auxes that have those inputs and groups that have those inputs all together in a matrix uh, and keep it all in sync. We actually have the way to, uh, our delay compensation will actually handle that very gracefully today. So I'm going to show you that. And then, let's see, what's next on the menu? Then we're going to talk just about some operational concepts. I got some quick slides uh, that some of you may have seen before, but they're, uh, they've been augmented a little bit for this presentation. Uh, and that, that should wrap it up. That should easily get us an hour's worth of time, I would think. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to get the right screen up. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take you into the venue software here a little bit, and we're going to do a little looking at the situation here. So I have a 192 engine here. So we're going to go to the systems page first and just take a look at what our options are in terms of allocating those buses uh, in our system, right? So if I go into uh, edit mode here, you'll notice that we have drop downs available here now. Uh, available to kind of choose the allocation of aux, uh, of total buses for one, and then the amount of those buses that are going to be designated as subgroups, right? That we can use as submasters or, or whatever kind of grouping we want to do there. All right, so I've got 16 shows in there, and uh, you can see that the total aux bus count goes to 80 once we have those 16 chosen. And now it's a matter of just going and doing our assignments. Right, so let's go take a look at a couple of different workflows here. So uh, I'm going to take you to the overview page first to actually show you the multi-select uh, multi workflow as opposed to multi-assign. All right, so uh, multi-select is a way of just grabbing any number of inputs, and whatever we do to one will happen to all. Okay, that's the idea there. 
So it is a multi-select workflow. It's, it's basically the, uh, the same as holding down the shift key and going in and attentioning channels, right? But if I were to say, let's say I were to take a number of channels, maybe I select those and then I shift select, whoops. As you can see, I can uh, take specific channels and select them in banks or individually to get any number of channels. And once I do that, uh, if I assign any one of those groups to my, uh, or those inputs to my group, it's going to assign all of them, right? So then I could go to the inputs page and just say, uh, let's assign all of those selected uh, inputs to uh, bus 16. So now group 16 carries all of these inputs. And if we were to go to that outputs page and actually highlight group 16, we would see all of those members in that particular group, right? We can see all of that there. All right, a similar kind of concept uh, applies uh, for doing other assignments as well if we want to work in this method, right? So we could uh, just go to a, a number of inputs. Let's say we take this bank and this bank maybe these individual instruments, or you could take, uh, you know, you could select all of these if you wanted to do it. And let's say we wanted to turn those on in an auxiliary, right? Then we could just collapse down uh, our, or expand out our auxiliary view and go to any one of the auxiliaries now and just turn it on. We could adjust its pre-status, whatever we wanted to do there. So I'm going to go all the way down to the last aux here, aux 80, and I'll turn it on and put it in pre, and maybe even set some level for that. I could do this for all of those channels uh, if I wanted to do that. So that is a multi-select workflow. Same thing would apply for assigning VCAs if we wanted to do it. Uh, you know, any of, the, any of the true grouping functions, we can use multi-select to do that. All right, so if we go to the outputs now and we take a look at that auxiliary, you'll notice that it has membership now up here in the upper right hand corner, right? You can see the membership there. And keep in mind that is based on what channels are on in that auxiliary. And that's important to remember that from one of the other features that are coming up here. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. We can also use this to do mute group assignment if we wanna do that. Uh, if we go to the control section and we go to mute groups, uh, if you can kind of see it here, this gets a little tough to read over the web, but I'll, I'll do the last group again. So I've got group 48 highlighted now. Uh, in this situation, this is where we have to move to a multi-assign workflow, multi-assign. So we're actually gonna put the console in a uh, particular status to assign it. So I go up here to the right, multi-assign is available on the universe view as well as in the software. You can uh, attack multi-assign on the actual surface as well. You can do that in the, uh, in the uh, MLM section, stand by. I'm going to just turn on my cameras here. Do my... Here we have two tactile controls. We have the multi-assign and the multi-select key, right? This, and remember, multi-select is essentially the same as hitting uh, the shift key. So if we were to go into multi-assign mode now, uh, uh, notice we are in multi-assign mode and uh, we're going to start uh, attentioning channels, uh, either input or output, that we want in that particular mute group, right? So uh, we can just go select a bunch of channels here, boom, 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 boom and come out of multi-assign, and now a number of channels are assigned to that, uh, that mute group. Uh, okay, so that is kind of multi-assign and multi-select in a nutshell works really easy once you get your head wrapped around how easy that is to do it's just a matter of seconds to get your entire console assigned all right let's talk about uh let's move on to talk about making stereo right obviously we have a lot of auxes we have a lot of groups available to us here uh, and we can uh, including matrices that we can make stereo so uh, let's start at auxes we'll just start there for right now so let's, uh, I'll go down here maybe into that last bank of auxes and just work down there. So let's take uh, this aux and then I'm going to multi-select and choose this aux. And we're going to make those pair of auxes stereo, right? So 
thing to keep in mind here is they don't have to be side by side. You know, they can be anywhere in the, uh, the aux menu there of channels. And then we're going to right click here. And we're going to say make selected strips stereo. Okay. So now notice if you can see it, the metering on that particular aux has now moved to stereo metering. And it is a stereo aux now. Exact same uh, principle applies for subgroups. We can take any two subgroups and right click there and make stereo. And of course, the same thing applies for matrices as well. We can take any two matrices and make them stereo as well. Okay. So it, just like that, it, you can make as many stereo groups, stereo matrices, stereo auxes as you have available to you. And then on top of it, you can actually take those uh, groups and matrices and auxes and move them anywhere you want. So uh, let's get back to our aux here. So I'm just going to grab an aux here. If I'm in config mode, I'm allowed to drag and drop that aux. So I can drag it and move it down here. I can change the running order of my auxes or the, the list order of my auxes, right? And this will impact how it shows up in the patch, okay, everything. Okay, so very, very easy to do it and get it arranged the way you want to do it, you know, with no penalties. It's really a great thing. The only, th the only portion of it that you cannot drag and drop is VCAs. VCAs are in a static order of 1 through 48 there, and you cannot drag and drop those, okay? How about, uh, let's talk about moving mixes, right? Let's talk about moving mixes now and copying mixes. Because a lot of times we want to, you know, take a, a mix of something and just duplicate it or use it somewhere else. Well, that is very easily handled here. So here we have uh, that auxiliary mix that we created, which has a number of auxes in it. Uh, and if we go up to the little gear icon up here in the upper right-hand corner, get on this cursor that way I think you can see this here. So if you go up to this little gear in the right-hand corner, actually, it's behind my picture in the screen there. So uh, you're going to have to let me see if I can move this out a little bit. So you can see it, then I'll move it back. So if we do this little drop down here, we can say replace with mix from somewhere else, right? So in this situation, we've already got a mix built in that auxiliary there. So let's go pick a different one and say replace with mix which I believe is 79, and now we've copied that, that mix that we built with on-off switches, et cetera, into the targeted auxiliary there. Okay, so exactly the same principle applies uh, for subgroups, uh, for mute groups, any groups that you have there, including even matrices, uh, you have that option as well. If we were to go to matrices here and highlight a matrix, uh, has a mix in it, maybe. Here we go. So obviously we have the multi-assign function there as well, uh, but you also have that drop-down menu of being able to replace uh, a mix with here. You can clear sources, you can reset the matrix, all kinds of things here in that matrix to help you do things quickly. A lot of times, especially in PA distribution, right, you just have a bunch of duplicate matrices in terms of their sources, uh, and even even your matrices that are you're using to drive two tracks records or things like that can are oftentimes you know a subset or an extra set of, of one particular matrix. You can just copy it many times, then add your audience mics to it, put your own processing on it, et cetera. You can do that actually really really quickly there. All right, so let's go to um, let's see here. Let's go back to our PowerPoint here, and we're going to go into uh, some. Uh, some discussion of these groups. This. All right, so when we talk about audio submasters uh, as subgroups, then usually we're talking about putting together families of instruments uh, into one subgroup, you know, especially if you're going to use it as a submaster. You know, the general recommendation is, like, for instance, for a drum kit, you would put all drums in the submaster, including its effects reprocessing, right? If there are effects returns, if there are parallel returns, put them all in one subgroup, and that way you have essentially a master volume for that family of instruments. In this uh, example, it's the drum kit, right? So as you notice here, even though we got three layers of console here, 
I've kind of got it broken up into families, right? I have the family of drums, uh, family of bass instruments, guitar, keyboards, backing vocals, and lead vocals. And of course, once we have that, then that, that just gives us, once those mixes are built, it just gives us a master volume control for that in that we're going to take that subgroup and assign it to the left-right master, right? So it just gives us the ability to set some, pre uh, set some levels to make it sound like music. And you can do this very, very quickly using audio subgroups. Uh, I, uh, I encourage people all the time to use these things, especially for like festival workflows and stuff. This is a really, really quick way uh, to be able to, to manage your audio in those situations, okay? How about for VCA grouping? VCA grouping, well, that's, you know, you can use VCA grouping as your submaster kind of workflow if you want to do it. I, I'm not here to tell you you can't do that, but uh, I, I like using a combination of VCAs and audio subgroups. So as you can kind of see here, I have a set of VCA masters uh, in addition now, but these VCA masters are only uh, in control of things that are happening within that audio submaster. So for instance, here I have one example here where I have a kick, snare, hat, and overhead that's on its own VCA. And that would allow me to ride those things in, in and out for maybe breakdowns of a song, whatever, uh, and then be able to quickly get them back to their original position by putting the VCA back to Unity on its, uh, in its fader position, right? So you see there, all my VCAs are sitting at Unity, and as I make adjustments to it, it's actually adjusting those input layer or input faders Right, so the thing to keep in mind there is that anything that is happening post fader of those faders is going to be affected by that VCA move. Uh, and honestly, the kick snare uh, toms and overhead one, or kick snare hat and overhead, is a great one because you can actually drive into your parallel compression a little harder when you want to turn it up uh, for breakdowns, etc. So this is where VCA can work to your advantage uh, in terms of setting that, uh, that setting up that move within the song. But the same thing applies for other VCAs as well, even though I've got a number of uh, keyboards there that are going to one audio submaster, well, look, I have three VCAs that are in charge of various keyboards within that uh, subgroup. In this situation, even though I have multiple uh, microphones on a Leslie, multiple microphones on a piano, and a whole host of other keyboards, well, I can break that down into three VCAs and have really good control over blending those things as needed. Right? And I can do that all within that audio submaster that has been created that is feeding the left-right bus. Same thing applies, obviously, for uh, guitars as well. You know, this is, I, to me, one of the biggest strengths of using VCAs, especially in a live scenario, where I, you know, I kind of think, have a tendency to think player when I think, what am I going to assign a VCA to? So if I've got a guitar player who plays guitar, acoustic, banjo, uh, keyboards, cowbell, whatever it's going to be, all of those inputs that he's going to play, I'm going to assign to a single VCA. And that allows me to never lose sight of his volume in, during the show at any given time. All I have to do is ensure that the right inputs are on, uh, and then that VCA is in control of it. So as you can kind of see here uh, in the turquoise faders, uh, I only have one input on, actually unmuted at the time, and that, that VCA is controlling that input even though it's controlling all of those inputs, only the correct one is on. And likewise, up in the top layer, or the, actually the bottom layer, the drum and bass layer, you see that I've got him playing some percussion or tambourine or something. Well, I've still got his VCA assigned to that. And when we go to adjust that, then all of his guitar inputs are muted, but the, the percussion that he's going to be playing is unmuted, and now that VCA is adjusting level for that as well. So it's a really handy way to just keep track of your players on stage, as opposed to doing them as a group level, uh, as a submaster, right? It's a little easier to, to take control of it here, and, and you'll see why here in just a second. Same thing would apply there. Obviously, we're taking, doing some percussion mixing there. All right, so uh, as I tell everybody that I'm working with on this situation, Grouping versus VCAs is not a binary question for me. It's not one or the other for me, for sure. I, I always encourage people to use both. Uh, and this, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, scenarios here where you can see them both in action uh, and see how powerful this can be for you. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, I've got audio submasters in play plus VCAs. This is kind of what I was describing 
uh, previously. So in that, oops, sorry, in that situation, you actually have master volumes for your families as well as VCAs that are controlling any of the inputs within those audio subnets. Okay, so let's talk about how a, a navigation uh, function here. Let's talk about spilling for a second. Uh, this is probably one of the uh, biggest assets that's come into digital consoles, uh, certainly in terms of navigation and grouping, right? Uh, as I've said to people many times, you know, to have all of these inputs and all of these outputs available to you on these digital consoles, if you can't navigate and get to the inputs that are within them or get to the groups themselves very, very quickly, it's not doing you much good. It's not helping you in a live event. If we're in post, et cetera, where we've got time to do lots of navigation, uh, you know, uh, freely, then it's not a big deal. But in live sound, you've got to be able to get to things very, very quickly. And all the spill capabilities that are available on today's digital consoles is really the key to this. So let's take a look at this. So here's our audio submasters. Remember, in this situation, we have all of our inputs plus all of our parallel processing, reverbs, plates, rooms, whatever we're going to have, that is all going to be assigned to an audio submaster, right? And if we were to double tap the attention button uh, in that situation, it would spill the contents of that out on the top layer. Now, it's important to note here that it doesn't, like all of these inputs don't need to be right next to each other. They can be scattered all over the place in terms of your input layers, but if you spill that group, it's going to collate them on the top layer for you and, and put them in order as they sit, all right? So you can get to them very, very quickly and then just release the spill and it goes right back to where it was, right? So it's a, it's a way to kind of drill down and filter out all of your input layers and only show me the things that are assigned to that particular submaster. VCA spilling works exactly the same way, right? So if we have a VCA that is assigned to specific inputs within that audio submaster, well, guess what? If we double tap the attention button on it as well, it is going to spill only the inputs it's in charge of right to the top layer. It's going to collate them right together down on the end of the console so that you can get in and EQ, adjust level, adjust plug-in processing, whatever you need to do on those given inputs, you can get to it very quickly there as opposed to kind of trying to go through your input layers and find those inputs uh, with which to edit on them, okay? All right, so here's another example of using these in conjunction uh, with the spill. And this is where it you start to realize just how fast, excuse me, you can be on a digital console. So in this situation, let's see what we got here. We're gonna double, double tap the audio submaster again. And of course, that's gonna bring uh, those audio channels up to that layer and allow us to work for, uh, work on them, right? Uh, and in this situation, I could double tap the, the VCA as well. It's gonna spill those up and let us get to them. But notice, I also have a VCA in this situation assigned to the audio submasters. And in my situation, it's only the music audio submasters, right? Remember, VCAs don't care. They can be assigned uh, to any, to control any other fader or set of faders on the console. So in this situation, I created a VCA that is just in charge of my music submasters, meaning drums, bass, guitars, and keys. And now I have a grand master volume for those faders, you know, as opposed to just pushing those faders up, you know, in group, or, or I should say as a group of four fingers pushing them up, which would change the blend of it, uh, uh, honestly. I can now do that with a VCA. Well, check out what happens with spill there, right? If I spill that VCA, it's going to, regardless of where those groups are sitting on the console, it's going to bring them right to the top layer, right, where I can get to them and make an adjustment if I need to do it on the blend. And then if I want to get to anything within those groups, I just spill the group again, and it's going to spill those inputs up and let me get to them. And then once I release it, everything snaps back to where we are. It's just an incredibly fast workflow. And in this situation, because you got those audio submasters assigned to a VCA, now you have a master volume control for just your music in your mix. It's a really, really powerful thing. It's intoxicating once you get used to using it uh, on how dynamic you can make your show sound. All right, let's go to our next example here, which is, uh, and I've seen guys run into trouble with this sometimes where they're running an auxiliary on a submaster. 
And they reach over and turn their submaster down only to realize their subwoofers are still going full tilt boogie, right? So in this situation, you would take a VCA and assign it to your left right master as well as your auxiliary submaster that is driving your subwoofer system. That way we have a, a what I would call a grand master for it now. We have a master that is controlling your left right mix plus your sub driver, uh, subwoof drive, subwoofer drive, excuse me. But the, all of the same principles still apply there, right? So in this situation, I'm going to spill that VCA if I want to, if I want to drill down and get to it. And guess what's going to come to the top layer? That aux and the left right master right next to it, right? Now, if I want to get to the things that are within that auxiliary to maybe change the balance of the keys versus the kick drum versus the tom-toms, whatever, all I have to do is spill the auxiliary. So if I spill the auxiliary, here they come. And those, I can get to those levels in that auxiliary from there and make those adjustments, right? I don't have to worry about navigating through what page is the matrix is on, what page is the aux is on, any of that kind of stuff. I'm just spilling down, adjusting, and releasing the spill. Another one that I've grown very fond of doing uh, over the past few years is using a, mass, a, a, a VCA as a master for all of my matrix drives that are going to the PA system. So, you know, kind of in today's PA world, certainly in the big PA world, we have a main left, right. We might have a down fill. We might have a ground fill. We might have an auxiliary PA that's off to the left and right, et cetera. Well, if, you, if those are all being driven by independent matrices off of your console, you can get to those very easily by assigning a VCA to them, right? So now I have a VCA that is literally the grandmaster for the PA volume, right? I can, I can adjust this without doing anything else on the console and actually adjust and set the volume of the PA on a given day, right? Maybe today I need the PA volume to be 6 dB less. Maybe today I need it to be 3 dB more, whatever. I can do that with one VCA taking care of that volume change. And of course, all the spill capability comes with that. If during the show I need to change something, maybe your A2 needs to get in and change the balance of a matrix. Of course, you could go to the processors and do that, but you could also just spill that VCA and get to those matrices right on the top layer of the console. He could then in turn spill one of those matrices and adjust the blend within the matrix all of the outputs that we have added together, we can adjust all of that there as well, okay? So really powerful stuff, really, really powerful stuff. So let's talk about uh, sins on faders plus aux spill. We're gonna talk about aux spill first, because uh, that's it's kind of a, you know, kind of a new concept. Uh, it hasn't been around that long, but I really, really like how we do aux spill on this console. And again, it's based on on-off membership. So channels that are on are going to show up in an auxiliary spill. Now remember, like if you're mixing monitors and you need to go adjust inputs, previous to aux spill, you would have to be have the, the aux highlighted and you wouldn't want to dive down and find the inputs that you need to, to deal with, go to the aux and make the change, right? It could get cumbersome really quickly and you really had to have your console laid out well to be able to navigate it quick. This kind of nullifies the need to do any of that, right? This is going to take care of it for you. So almost like a filter mechanism, uh, you know, a filtered find, so to speak, like we see on computers. So here's kind of how it works. You have a couple choices here. You could go to the universe screen and engage spill. And once you do that, any tile that you touch uh, that is an aux master is going to spill out in front of you. And I, I just want to kind of just really drive this home, how important this is to be able to do this from the universe screen. On the universe screen in, on SXL, you can see all 96 mixes sitting in front of you. And if you wanna see the inputs that are on in any one of those mixes, it's a two button push. It's push spill and then touch the aux and it's gonna spill out in front of you. And you can make actual adjustments on level right there, right? I mean, it's, uh, you can get to those inputs and it go up and adjust them in that aux. So it's really, really fast to get there, especially for a front of house guy. If you want to see what's happening within an aux where you have faders that are going to an aux, uh, this is a really cool way to do it because it will just collate all the channels that are on, regardless of where they are, right in front of you. Of course, you can do it by double tach tapping the attention button on the aux master as well, and it will then spill out those faders that are there. Once those faders are there, then obviously we have to kind of navigate. We have to select the channel we want to adjust. 
and go up into the auxiliary and make the adjustment in terms of level, right? Uh, so it, it would have to do it that way. But aux bill is a really, really powerful workflow here. All right, so let's combine that workflow. Let's combine that aux bill workflow now with sends on faders, which is a, another really, really great workflow. This is really the money uh, workflow for monitor guys. This is so great. So in that situation, we're going to engage spill on the universe screen, but we're also going to engage sends on faders at the same time, right? And once we do that, when we uh, attack an auxiliary there, or, you know, attention and auxiliary there, then it's going to do two things, right? It's going to put that auxiliary in sends on faders and spill the auxiliary in front of us. So right, once we do that, we get indication that we're in sends on faders and in spill, and uh, these faders are now the actual auxiliary levels. Uh, go back one. The actual auxiliary levels. These are the equivalent of the knobs in the auxiliary. So we get both just the inputs that are on in the aux, and we get their knob levels on faders sitting right in front of us. It's just fantastically great. Really, really great. In addition, we have a VCA workflow that works in conjunction with that, uh, where if you have a, a VCA assigned to the input faders that are going up into that aux, you can now have a VCA trim of those in the auxiliary itself, right? And keep in mind, this is trim. This is not absolute level here. So we can make an adjustment on that VCA, and we're actually keeping that blend that you see on those three faders, but just turning it up or down X amount of dB with the VCA, All right? So again, super powerful. You know, this was kind of aimed at monitor guys, but I would tell you without question, I've grown to use this workflow a lot in front of a house now, especially where if I've built a blend into an auxiliary that's maybe going to parallel compression or going to a reverb, if I don't want to change that blend, I'll, I'll assign a VCA to those inputs that are there and have a VCA trim to drive into the reverb or into the compression harder or less with that exact same blend. So uh, it works great. And, and as well, you know, obviously with the sends on fader and the spill, I can get in and change that blend into that reverb very, very quickly, or that compressor very, very quickly, okay? So it's really, really a great, great workflow. All right, so um, I know it says thank you, but I'm not quite done yet. I gotta come back and show you one that I, I skipped over, which is uh, auxiliaries going up into a matrix, or you know, a number of inputs going up into a matrix and proving to you that that is time coherent. So let me switch over again to the cameras here. Hopefully my All right, so uh, let's see, I'll show you this first. So I'm gonna show you a matrix here uh, that I've got built to kind of demonstrate this. All right, so uh, you have a matrix here, and I want you to just kind of outline uh, what is in this for you guys, uh, and then we'll show you this taking place here. So I'm going to annotate here just a little bit. So we have two input channels that are coming into this matrix, right? We also have those same two input channels assigned to two subgroups. I have those same two input channels assigned to two auxiliaries and those same input channels assigned to the left, right. Okay, now I'm gonna leave the left, right off here for this situation, uh, but I just wanted to let you know that it, it's going there in case you were using it uh, in your left, right, in addition to the matrix, okay? Also on these uh, particular um, groups and, and auxiliaries, I have plugins inserted on them. So uh, I do not have input uh, input inserts here for plugins. Sorry, I'll try to talk here. Uh, I don't have plugin inserts on the inputs, but I do have them on, the, on one of the groups. I believe it's on group two and on one of the auxiliaries. So my point of bringing all that up is that normally we would have a lot of different path links going up to this. If we were trying to add all this together, given that they have these inputs common, 
it would just simply not work. It would be comb filtering like crazy. And we can kind of see that if we look at the smart trace here. You can see here, zoom in here. You can see all of those impulses coming up there, right? Right there, that's those impulses coming into uh, that matrix there. So obviously this would comb filter like crazy. So if we want to, um, so if we want to fix that, we obviously got to go to delay compensation and turn that on uh, in our system. And it's going to handle both those mixed pathways up there as well as the plug-in inserts there. So I'm going to go to uh, kickoffs. And as you can see, the... The delay compensation is off. Let me clear these drawings out of here. And okay, so here we go. We're just going to turn that on, and you should see it all clear right up. Right? And there you go. That is realigning all of those paths. So just to recap that, it, that is an, uh, a pair of inputs without any insert processing on them, any plug-in insert processing on them going into an aux, a group, uh, an aux with plug-in inserts on it, a group with plug-in inserts on it, and having it all be added together uh, at the matrix. So that is kind of, uh, that's kind of what we offer in SXL land right now in terms of bus-to-bus -bus workflows, where you would have aux buses being added together with group buses in a matrix, uh, et cetera. Okay, so uh, in that situation, maybe you were using that matrix output to drive to a set of ear monitors, and you wanted to have a lot of flexibility in terms of what you add there, well, you can kind of rest assured that if you do it in that in the confines of that, you can have all those things add together and be time coherent there. Okay. All right. So let's go back to this guy now. And I will say thank you, and we'll kind of open it up for questions here, and we'll take it from there. to my screen so I gotta be able to see the chat window here. Stand by. Okay, uh, so uh, we are at the Q&A section. So if you guys have questions, please post them in the chat and I'll get them answered for you. And I'll take it right there. All right, here's our first one. So how do you release the spill? Well, there are two ways. And I really, I probably should have shown you this. Actually, maybe I can do it with some cameras here. Stand by. And we'll just address it there. In one second, just to get the cameras rebooted here. And I'm not going to lie to you, it's hot in Arizona today. Whew. All right, you should be able to see that uh, there. So I've got a set of uh, groups and auxes here on these faders here. So if I were to spill one of those, I'll just spill this second group. If I double tap it, uh, down here become the, the channels that are available to me. And if I have the preference chosen in the, uh, in the options overview to lock down the, the channel I spilled, then it stays here. And I can just simply touch the attention button again and it will bring back the channels just as they were. If you don't have that option check where when I spill, this goes away, this master fader goes away, then you can always use the cancel button up here uh, to cancel the spill. You'll see OK and cancel flashing. If I just cancel, then, of course, the faders come right back in front of me. Okay. All right. Does spill bring forward whole banks or individual inputs, auxes, et cetera? Uh, okay, so it depends on, well, it doesn't depend. I'll, I'll give you the answer in total. The, the spill would bring forward all of the inputs that are assigned to an aux and turned on by, by being turned on, all of the inputs that are assigned to a subgroup. Okay, so regardless of where they live in the input structure, in the input layers, those are going to be recollated and brought to the top. Uh, so it's not a matter of, uh, you know, not even thinking banking at that point. Uh, because those inputs could be spaced anywhere and brought up to that top layer. Um, so I hope that answers that question there. 
All right, well, I'll kind of hold on here. How does delay comp affect PA align? Well, normally, if you're going to have uh, delay comp in place anyway, uh, it would just, you know, it's already kind of taken care of in that, you know, it's going to affect your throughput in total anyway. Uh, so depending on your longest insert, et cetera, it's going to create some buffer there. So you would want to, you know, I guess the simple answer is if you're going to do PA alignment, make sure you have these kind of bus additions already accounted for and have your uh, delay compensation on. You wouldn't want to do that after your PA align because you possibly could create some offset there. So I would, you know, I would, in the vast majority of cases, I would leave that delay compensation on and, you know, that way any inputs, et cetera, I add up there, it's going to do it. But I would, I would also encourage you to have, uh, if, especially if you're using plug-in inserts there, have them done ahead of time. But to, before you do your PA alignment, you want to put that in place and, and make sure it's not uh, putting extra buffer into your console throughput there. I hope that makes sense there. Will delay compensation also account for pl uh, third-party plugins? Uh, it sh 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 let's see. Is that gonna? I think so. Yes, because that's considered a. Well, I know it would account for hardware inserts, and let's see. I gotta believe yes. I gotta believe it will. Uh, if you're using waves with the sound card. I would even say if you're using waves and even something like real time rack, it would account for the MADI pass through, but it wouldn't necessarily account for the actual plug in time there. So you'd have to be careful there. But if you're using the Wave Sound Grid card with Venue, uh, if you're using any of the third party plugins, and that in that way that I showed you here, where they are inserted on group masters, aux masters, and being added together in that aux, yes, those will be accounted for. Uh, I'll just read the question so that my answer can kind of make sense. Am I to understand that you use groups for player mixes, uh, including their effects, et cetera, and VCAs for instrument mixes? That's close, but it's not exactly uh, what I would do there. So I'll give you an example. I, I, again, I, in audio submasters, I'm thinking families of instruments, not players. So the easiest example of that is if I've got three guitar players, three electric guitar players, I will probably put... I could put all of those into one audio submaster that represents the overall electric guitar level in the PA. Maybe a better example would be if I've got two drummers, I'm probably going to put them in one drum group, all of the drums in one drum group, unless I need, I want to be able to navigate separately from them. But probably what I would do in that situation as well is have all of their inputs and processing available to the audio subgroup that represents the drum level going to the PA. And then maybe inside that, I would have one VCA that is one drummer and one VCA that, is, that represents the other drummer and be able to possibly adjust those two things uh, or key inputs in there. So again, I think families of instruments, not players, that are in that audio submaster. But on the VCA, I'm thinking player there. I want to have a VCA that is in charge of the player's instruments, right? The, the audio submaster sets the overall uh, volume for that family of instruments in the PA system. So I hope that, hope that answers that. Uh, is it possible to cancel a spill using a function key? Oof. That's a really good question. I, I guess I could go look here. I'm going to say it probably does. I know in the events right now, uh, which is our way of you know, doing that, we can take just about, I, I would even dare say, we can take any switch function or even fader or knob function on the console and make it do something else. Uh, so if we could have a function key recreate uh, cancel, then I would say we could certainly do that. But you know, honestly, there's more than enough uh, ways on the console to collapse that spill, so to speak. Like like I said, just double tap or single tapping a double attentioned uh, master is one way, and then the cancel button is always on the top level of the surface. It's just a matter of just kind of training your eye geometry to go there to cancel it. Matter of fact, we, we did it that way for ages before we put the, uh, the lockdown on the, the group master to the top layer when it spilled.
uh, is it possible to determine in which fader bank the spill is deployed? When you want to work from the center on a big surface instead of reaching all the way to the left physical uh, channel. Line. Yeah, so you, I, what you're hinting at, I think there is spill zones. And we do not support uh, spill zones on S6L at this point. Uh, it is always going to spill to the left, uh, to the far left, and work its way back toward you. Uh, and, and that is what I know about that. What is, a, what is normal range of delay compensation? I, I would say there is no real normal range of delay compensation. It's always going to be based on the longest path. Whatever the longest path you create in that output structure, uh, it's going to de delay other outputs back to that to ensure that they're all time coherent, uh, especially in that matrix where it's going to do that. Okay, so it's not really a, uh, it can be the entire range depending on how big a plug-in you put in there. I mean, not to be flippant about it, but if you put a plug-in that had 24 hours of latency in it, it would take 24 hours of all your outputs to hit the output of the console. So. All right. Well, that was a pretty juicy bunch of questions there, fellas. Good job there. Um, I, hope, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little trip down subgroup lane, and that appears to be the end of the question. So I appreciate you guys showing up. I appreciate your time. I hope we answered some questions or maybe dis demystified that a little bit for you. And uh, we'll see you on another AVID S6L Unified Platform webinar in the future. I'm sure I'm going to do more. So we'll see you later. Thank you, guys. We'll see you. Bye-bye.